All right, so we are recording now. We are we are live and ready to go. Uh, this is Swimmer Joe Show with Dave Van Buskirk and Jeff Papel. Uh, if you guys are on there watching, you can tell a little bird, which is right there on your screen. It's that blue button. Just tweet out that you're on here and listening to the show. We have the Gulliver, Gulliver Prep uh, uh, head coach and Gulliver Swim Club coach, Jeff Papel. Jeff, how you doing? Doing great, Joe. Appreciate you having me on. So, man, a wonderful ride for Jeff Papel. You've you've grown up in the state, um, coached a bunch, um, went to Arkansas, now down at Gulliver. Tell us a little history about Jeff Papel, where where you grew up and swam, right? And then from that point on, I actually grew up in Jacksonville. Jacksonville's home for me. Actually, he's born and raised in Atlantic Beach. So, uh, for those that know Jacksonville, it's you know Atlantic Beach is I'm a I'm a beach boy. So my parents. Actually, just sold their home, but I grew up about two blocks off the ocean. Uh, <laughs> so that, that's how I swam for a club, Beaches Aquatic Club. I remember them. They say, yeah. So that's where I started uh, many, many years ago. And um, and guess it was when I was about 12 years old, we lost our coach, and we merged with a team in, in town, Amberjacks. Larry Schof was the head coach at the time. Uh, oh, wow. Of both Episcopal and Amberjacks. So uh, – from that point, Larry became my, my club coach. I then decided to go to school at Episcopal High School, which is kind of interesting because both my parents were public school uh, principals. <laughs> and they ended up sending me uh, to a private school, as they say to this day, only because of swimming, not for any other reason. But um, So I swam for Larry, a uh, show all through high school uh, in the Amberjack Swim Club. And uh, after my senior year, actually towards the end of my senior year, that's when he left to go to, to uh, Bowles to bec become Greg Troy's assistant there. Um, I went off to the University of Georgia and swam for Jack Barrowley uh, for four years there. Uh, and then after I, when I came home in the summers, I swam at Bowles with both Larry and Greg Troy. And, uh, and then after I finished at Georgia, I moved back to Jacksonville. I actually started working full time in, in banking. That was my degree was in, in business and management. And, uh, and I was coaching part time beginning in 1993 uh, at Bowles, which was pretty close to where, where my office was. And uh, so I was full time banker, part time coach. Um, I did that for five years. I became Greg Troy's head agent coach uh, there at Bowles. And then in 1998, when he left to go to Florida and took some of our assistants, Anthony Unesti, Martin Wilby, uh, that created a full-time coaching position to work yeah. with Larry Schof. And at that point, I dropped banking. <laughs> I've not gone back. And, uh, and I've been coaching ever since. I was at Bowles for 13 years, uh, wow. uh, from 1993 to 2006. And I uh, had the opportunity uh, to be Larry's assistant. Uh, for four years from that 98 to 2002. And then I was the head coach from 2002 to 2006. And then I went to the University of Arkansas for six years uh, before moving to Miami. Yeah. How was that in Arkansas? I mean, you know, you go from the club level, which is intense, a lot of kids, a lot of parents, a lot of different things. And then you go immediately to uh, Arkansas, um, SEC, big yep. time stuff, having yep. to recruit. I mean, tell us a little bit about that experience. I will. It's a similar experience to what I've had at Gulliver, but, but different from the standpoint that it was a college program and competing in the SEC. So uh, Arkansas traditionally always been the bottom of the SEC. Uh, I remember the, the year before I arrived there, I was looking, you know, I kind of wanted to, I did a lot of research before I accepted that position just to get a feel for, you know, what I had to start with. And, and they were last at SECs, could have doubled their points and they still would have been last at SECs. I mean, that's how far they, they were behind. So it was definitely building a program program from scratch. You mentioned before, a lot of recruiting involved uh, with that. Um, that was new for me. At Bowles, you're, it recruited itself. You know, the success of the program, the tradition, the history, which Greg uh, Troy obviously established, um, it recruited itself. But at Arkansas, as a college coach, it's different. You know, you got to recruit uh, off of what you've done previously as a coach, and I had to recruit off of the university it's, itself. So it was challenging, but we had 10 swimmers starting off the first year I was there, so we were pretty small. Um, and then that next year, we added a, a very large recruiting class. Our recruiting class was ranked fifth in the country that year, and we jumped up in the top 25 national rankings in year two. And then, nice. Yeah, which was nice. And then we ended up reaching as high as 17th in the country, and, and uh, we actually got as high as fifth in the SEC, uh, with the only four teams being ahead of us at the SEC championships, the big four. Florida, Georgia, Auburn, and, uh, and Tennessee. So we were able to accomplish a lot there. And I think, you know, what we rested on was just our ability to develop kids. You know, we, we weren't going to get the top recruits. We knew that. 
uh, the top recruits were going to the, the established programs, but we had to, I guess you want to say bank on our ability to make kids better and make them competitive. And for the most part, we were able to do that. We had a lot of kids that qualified for NC2As and scored individually. And these were kids that weren't highly recruited by the bigger programs uh, that were out there. I uh, had a great assistant who's still there today, Todd Mann. And uh, Todd was with me at Bowles and, and then uh, joined me at Arkansas. No Todd. No Todd. Very well. No Todd. Very well. And uh, and like I said, we had a lot of fun and, and accomplished a lot there. And, and uh, the SEC, I mean, it was a lot of fun. I mean, it's the best swimming and diving conference out there. And that environment that you get competing against those schools, especially at SEC championships, it's second to none. It's a lot of fun. That's great. So I want to tell everybody that there there is an open seat down there. If you want to come down at the bottom, there is an open seat. And um, what's a, to Bobby, Bobby Gantoro? Is that how you say his name? <laughs> yeah, he needs to join for sure. <laughs> but there is, see, if you guys want to join, just uh, click join and, uh, and, and we'll look at you and approve you and get you to uh, join us here at the uh, Swimmer Joe Show. Um, welcome back, Dave. Yeah, welcome back, Dave. Dave's back with us. Hey, thanks a lot. Well, Bobby swam for me at Bowles, actually, and he is now an assistant coach at NC State, who's obviously – doing phenomenal things right now as a program so it's great to see bobby on there he's doing some great things there in NC State. Yeah, if you guys have a question we're going to be all over the place it looks like because we're getting a lot of questions and a lot of different things and sharon rob tells us right here in the in the text she goes okay you know when are you going to get a diver or are you going to get a diver because of your your bowls meet a few days ago yeah 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 so uh <laughs> you know the interesting thing about that and the bowls meet that joe's reference and Came up short against Bowles by six points on, on the girls when we swam them in a dual meet last Friday. and But we were starting 19 points behind when, we, when the meet started because we didn't have any divers, and Bowles had three. They got one, two, three. So uh, we were proud of what we accomplished, but, yeah, it would have helped to have a diver there. Uh, we don't have a diving well. We don't have any diving boards. Uh, down the street, though, we have the University of Miami, and they have a pretty pretty successful club program there. So the only thing that we can hope from is maybe maybe there's some some divers in that club program that decide they want to come to school at Gulliver, and uh, but they can't practice with us because we really don't have anywhere for them to go. But it would be helpful. <laughs> look who I look who I got. Yeah, you recognize those two? Of course, of course. <laughs> so we've got Nikki and Kelly down below. They just uh, uh, committed to Florida, of course. I mean, where else would they go, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Bobby. Sorry, Bobby. Um, <laughs> So, do you have any questions, guys, for uh, your coach? Hmm. No, you don't have to. You can just sit and watch for a little. You can sit and watch for a little while. We just want to say hi. We want to show our support. Oh, that's yeah. great. We love support. We love support. You guys are awesome. It's good seeing you. All right, so we're gonna move right along. Tell coach, me, I tell saw me you. a little bit about your favorite moment. Well, tell me how you got into swimming, actually swimming, and then your favorite moment as a swimmer. Uh, you're asking me that or you're asking the girls? I'm asking you that. Me. I already know their favorite moment. Their favorite moment was committing to Florida. Last week, exactly. Um, it was kind of interesting, you know. Yeah, exactly. Both of my, both of my parents, <laughs> no. like I said, were, were, were principals. So um, they both worked. And so it was a situation where when I was younger, um, this was prior to going to elementary school and actually even in elementary school, they used to drop me off in the morning. Kind of this, There's a kind of a daycare type of facility. Uh, near our house in Atlantic Beach, and then the, the the daycare center would take us to elementary school and then pick us up at the end of the day. And I was a soccer player. My dad was a soccer coach. My brother was a soccer player. So I started out playing soccer. And it was interesting because there was a lot of other kids that were part of this uh, daycare that I, that I was a part of that swam. And uh, they would go to meets, and then they would come back, and they'd show off their ribbons and their medals and their trophies. It was like, we didn't get any of that in soccer. And I was like, that's pretty cool. So uh, from that point, I told my parents, you know, I want to try this swimming thing out. So uh, that's kind of what happened. So I joined Beaches Aquatic Club, which was nearby. And, and all these swimmers were a part of that program there. And uh, started having su some success uh, right away. Uh, I started swimming and, and I played soccer. I did both for probably a good four or five years. Uh, and then I got to that point about age 12 where I kind of needed to make a decision whether I wanted to you know, choose one versus the other and commit. And at that point, I decided, you know, swimming was the sport I wanted to follow. So that's kind of how I got into it. Um, in terms of favorite moments, it's probably I'm a big team guy. And, and like I said, the University of Georgia, where, where I swam, um, 
you know, those are some of the best experiences of, of my life, that's for sure. And my senior year at Georgia, uh, we were competing at the SEC Championships in 19, 1992 uh, at Alabama. And uh, similar to kind of our situation um, last week with, uh, with uh, Bowles, we didn't have any divers. So we walked in the very first day of the meet, diving was beforehand, and we were dead last on the board. We were 125 points behind Florida, who was at number one. And wow. long story short, at the end of the meet, we finished second overall to Florida. Still to this day, the highest finish that uh, Georgia's ever had. They've been second again, but that was the first time uh, that that had ever really happened there in a long, long, long time. And uh, as a senior and captain and so forth, to me, that was a really special moment, uh, a special opportunity for me. That is, that's awesome. Awesome. Look who joined us down here. Hey, Bobby. Hey, Coach Popal. It's good to see you, bud. Good to see you. All right. So, so Bob, you got, you got any stories, you got any stories for, uh, 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 by the way, this is, this, this is Bobby. This is Bobby. Uh, Jeff just talked about him a little earlier, NC State. Yeah. Tell me some stories, man. Tell me some. Tell me some stuff. Well, you know, I think uh, I, I I pay a lot of respect to Coach Popel. I think uh, he's uh, influenced me a lot to become a coach now. And uh, you know, I think he was he was a, one of the biggest mentor in my life. And uh, he really truly uh, helped me understand what's important in life is not just swimming, but also academically. Uh, he he was able to uh, guide me to really understand what's important. So uh, I think I learned a lot from him in that. And I truly believe that, you know, for any student athletes out there, it's, it's really important for them to put their academic first and athletic second. And I learned that from Coach Popel. And, uh, you know, it, it, I really believe in that to the key of the success. And uh, for story, oh gosh, eight to hundred butterfly on Friday, Friday morning. I do not miss that. <laughs> oh. Friday, Friday. <laughs> yep. fly, Friday, fly day for sure. Absolutely. Yep. Uh-huh. He, he handled it like a champ. <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, so, I got hey, a quick so question I, for Coach Popel, if, if I could. Just, you know, and then sure. I, I get I get off from the, this camera thing. I'm not used to this. <laughs> You're doing um, great. What, what would be your advice for a young coach like me? I mean, you know, because you've, you've been very successful in many different levels, and, uh, you know, you've, you've done it. You've done it all. You know, you, you built a great program at Bowles. You've been a great program at um, Arkansas. And you built a great program at Golfer Prep. So, uh, you know, what would be your best advice for us? Well, and I think you're, you're on the right path right now. I mean, I was very, very fortunate because, again, I started my career at Bowles. So I had a, a wonderful staff of, of coaches that were very experienced, very veteran, and, and Greg Troy and Larry Shove. Uh, obviously Martin Wilby was there and, and, and Anthony Nesty as well. And I learned a lot. I learned every day and it was an opportunity hands on to ask questions, to watch, to observe and to see how they uh, interact with their athletes to see why, how they plan, you know, a season. Um, that experience to, to me has, has been invaluable. Uh, it's something obviously that I've utilized in my entire coaching career. And so I, I feel like, you know, for a young coach, you know, the best thing to do, I think, is surround yourself with some excellent coaches that obviously have a lot of experience and a lot of success. Um, and it gives you a perspective. I, you know, I, I think we all agree in the coaching profession that there's a number of different ways to be successful, but at least gives you a perspective of, you know, one set of coaches or one program that's been re- uh, successful doing it a certain way. And then obviously as a coach, you can always add to that, take from that, and kind of come up with your own coaching philosophy and way of, of doing things. But like I said, you have a, a phenomenal situation right now at NC State uh, with, with Braden and, and, and Gary and Todd and obviously yourself. Um, and again, I know Braden's got a, got a great, great um, you know, experience or resume behind him, especially at Virginia Tech with Ned Skinner. And, uh, and you guys are doing some phenomenal things right now. So you're on the right path without a doubt. And the coaches that you work with on a day-to-day basis, you know, you can't help but learn every day. Every day. All right. Thank you. I want to know how you snag, Bobby. I want to know how you snag Tyler Rice, 4,400 freestyler from, from Bulls, and then also snag Dan Erlenmeyer from SYS out of the state to NC State. Tell me that story. Oh, <laughs> you know, we just uh, we just a group of uh, – to be honest with you, you start with the family. We, we, you know, we, we are a big family here at NC State, not just the coaching staff, but 
but the team itself and uh, we, we sell them that, hey, we believe in we're a big dreamer and we have a big dream and uh, they want to be a part of the family that have a big dream and work towards that dream every day. So uh, that's, uh, I guess that's the key and they want to be a part of that. So that's really cool. That's really cool. Thank All you. right, Jeff, favorite moment as a coach. Oh, by the way, before we get going, um, John Luca is on. He coaches uh, down there in South Florida at Azura. We would love for him to join. We have an open seat at the bottom right. John Luca, we'd love for you to join. Um, but also, um, tell a little bird, see the bird? See the blue bird? I saw on the little tell a little bird. Tweeted okay. out that we're on here. Everybody can do it. Um, anyway, so favorite moment as a coach, I gave you about a, min a minute soak time there, Jeff. Oh, man. I know. It, you've been coaching a long time. <laughs> I know. I didn't use that minute the way I needed to. <laughs> it's like I need to call a lifeline or something. Right. Favorite moment as a coach. You could say, all right, I'm going to split it up since I don't want to offend anybody. Well, I, I, I can well, split it up. Know, to that, that's the challenge, and I'm going to be probably – I don't want to say politically correct, but at least correct from the standpoint, you know, that between Bowles and Arkansas and, and even Gulliver now, uh, I've, I've been fortunate to have some great memories and get great experiences at all three places. And they're all different. I mean, I remember when I was at Bowles, you know, one of my, my – one of the moments I was most proud of uh, as a coach was this this young girl, Annie Adams. I, I, I think I used this, this example several years ago. And, you know, Annie, at the, the highest level she ever reached was Junior Olympics. You know, but was what was just one heck of a hard worker. Came in every day. Was one of the most respectful, polite young ladies you'll ever meet. Ever. Her her mom actually was our, was our diving coach at, at, at Bowls, Katie Adams. And um, but Annie just worked her tail off day in day out. She it wasn't necessarily the most naturally talented or gifted or so forth. But I remember when she made. I'm a kind of emotional person anyway. But when she made her first Junior Olympic cut. I just started balling, you know, and it was just, you know, she wasn't the fastest swimmer on the team. She wasn't the fastest swimmer in the group or anything like that, but it was just a culmination of seeing individuals, you know, work hard and, and obviously achieve something that maybe they didn't think was possible. And I've been fortunate to have that everywhere I've been and, and they're just as special. You know, uh, we obviously had kids at bowls that were in you know, us national champions, world rank, wow. and so forth. But I'll tell you, I mean, uh, as special as those moments were, you know, the ones that people don't always see were every bit as special. So. That's, that's really great. Why, why we're sitting here listening and talking to Jeff Papel, Gulliver's coach. I do want to thank the aquatic shop for uh, making this possible for us tonight. Also, we have a lot of people online that I do want to say uh, hi to Dave. I see Dave from uh, USA swimming is on there. We also got Dave Van Buskirk again. We have uh a bunch of different people going down the line and love for you guys to jump on. And it looks like we have some questions. You have a marathon dad that is new to at least, well, not as experienced in swimming. So maybe you guys can get some good swim tips towards the end for those new to swimming. New to swimming? For swim tips? Yep. Okay. Oh, for open water. Okay. Okay. We could do that. Absolutely. And All right. That join seat, somebody needs to jump on there. We still have an open seat, guys. I mean, any it doesn't matter what the question is. If you just want to hang out and not ask a question, you can just sit there and have your face on there. We'd love to like see Dave. you. <laughs> like Dave. Like Dave. Like Dave, absolutely. Dave, are you finally plugged in down there? Man, yes. Okay. You're you're right. You I had I'm sorry, I got every tenth word. Okay, so what we've 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 talked to Dave about um what he's done in coaching, favorite uh, moment as a coach, a lot of different things. We had a, another coach come on from NC State and talk to him a little bit, um, talked about uh, his upbringing and stuff. So you're and, up to I speed. was excited to hear about the uh, meet the other day with Bowles. Can't believe close meet just came down to diving. So Came down to diving. That was really a difference in the meet. So we were fortunate to win a lot of events. We finished one and two in a lot of events as well, which, which helped us you know, on the, on the team score. And, uh, yeah, I mean, our, our kids were pretty excited about it for sure. All right, so there is a question over here about not being able to swim straight in open water. Now, but before we get back to Jeff, I just want to say there is a product out. I don't know if you guys have seen it on Facebook that is actually goggles that someone invented. It's like a GPS where if you go off course, it gives you a red light in your goggles. If you're on course, it is a green light. So now you don't have to lift your head in open water anymore. How much so, do those things cost? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm curious. See, how, how long is it going to take those yeah, things? There, to there's a kick, there's a Kickstarter campaign. We'll probably try to find it and put the link up. But it's you know, I, I mean, you could hammer down when you don't have to lift your head, and it's not tiring you out a little bit. So 
Absolutely. Hey, I wonder how much longer are they going to take before they come into the swimming world to keep you off the lane lines? Oh, that'd be good for backstroke if they could yep. figure that out. After the, kind of like on the, the cars, they have the little sensors when you start get close to hitting something. Right? <laughs> yeah. There's some type of sensor when you get close to the lane rope on backstroke, it goes off. Yeah. So what about, do you have any other tips for swimming straight, Jeff? Uh, no, I mean, uh, I mean, I've had some open water swimmers. Um, yeah, that the only tip really to keep straight is just every, every, you know, depending on what your breathing pattern is, is just kind of have a plan before you start the race that, you know, every five strokes, every three strokes or whatever, you're going to lift your head up and just kind of visualize, you know, your line. That's really what most open water swimmers do. Um, you have to, I mean, what, especially if you're in an open water, kind of like an ocean, you know, yeah. with the way and so forth, it's real easy to get pushed off course. Uh, lake, it's a little bit easier, but uh, the only really way to visualize is just lift up your head and take a look. And and yeah, it, after a while, especially for long distances, it take take its toll on you for sure. Yeah, well, Marathon Dad over in the chat says um, he he breathes bilaterally, and I I I agree with that because that will keep you straight for the most part. If you have a balanced stroke, uh, you'll pretty much if you're breathing every three, you're going to be pretty straight. Absolutely. And we'll, hey, do you have any questions for Mr. Jeff Papel? Hey, yeah, I, we probably are. You might have already cut, uh, discussed this earlier. How is the uh, high school season going so far? High school season's going well. It's hard to believe we were only four weeks into it, and we just had a final meet last weekend. So, uh, yeah, you know, that's the thing with high school swimming, it's just such a short season, but it's going really well. Um, you know, the, the biggest challenge that we've had has had nothing to do with meets or anything like that. It's the darn weather down here. We've had uh, we've gotten yep. pounded with the storms, and uh, so we never know from one practice to the next whether we're going to get a workout in. I mean, last last week, I think it was Wednesday morning, morning practice, 5.30 in the morning, lightning, you know, and we, we yeah. got pounded, and, and we barely got ah. Oh, no. Yeah. It's a storm. Well, it's the weather. That's all right. I'll get him. Hold on. <laughs> it's the weather. Knock him off. Anyway, um, he got knocked off. By the way, by the way, Gulliver has built a program that was pretty much non-existent. I mean, they've been around a long time, but pretty much non-existent. Um, and now he's really, really pushed it with all the athletes and really, really getting a lot better. So I'm really excited to see Jeff in the future and, and, and what holds for them. Hey, Joe, with that being said, especially how close it was with Bowles, this is going to be an interesting uh, state championship because now in the past, Bowles is kind of – opened it up, but now they're going to have some competition, it sounds like, and it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Well, you will tell us. So Bowles is 1A. Yeah. Okay. You got Bowles, Lake Highland, which, by the way, Lake Highland girls are very, very tough. They're yes. probably one swimmer away from winning the whole thing. And I talked to Mike the other day uh, at practice, and maybe one swimmer away, you know, gosh, if they if they could figure out a way to, to win all three relays, mm -hmm. in, in my thoughts – and, and then maybe um, some of their swimmers end up winning some yeah. events. They've got a real good shot at winning the whole thing. Yeah, they look good this past weekend. I saw them at Brantley. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, so they could they could knock them off, and it's been yeah. like multiple years for for them being on top. Right. Yeah, one more question. All right, so I got another question from Marathon Dad, and says um, for some reason my foot arch cramps towards the end of a long swim. I never cramp in running. Um, but simply pointing my toes to streamline starts to hurt after a while. Any thoughts or not? And you know what? That happens to me sometimes. Uh, it happens to me after swimming about a 1500. And I tell you, you're, you may be a lacking a little bit of salt. Um, you can check that out. I don't, I don't know, but you can, you can definitely look at that. Um, make sure that you're, you're, you're super limber, man. And, and make sure that, um, you're just real hydrated. That'll help a lot. All right. We also got Jamie Marks on there. Yeah. Welcome, Jamie. Yes. Hey, Thomas gave a tip. Relax your feet. Relax your feet. Feel the water move between your toes. That's a great tip for Dave Thomas from Dave Thomas. He, uh, he did an awesome job this summer, this early summer, uh, doing the commentating. Dave needs to join. Yeah. Why aren't you Santa Claus? Why aren't you joining us? <laughs> there he is. All right, so we'll see what he has to say. Hi, there Dave. Is. Hi, guys. All right, guys, this is Dave Thomas, USA Swimming, Southeastern Region. Um, man, good to see you. 
Good to be seen, I guess. <laughs> I usually wait till later in the year to be seen. Now listen, I listen, listen. I have done nothing but um, cross my T's and dot my eyes for Christmas. I, I just want to make sure that um, I'm getting all the good gifts and my stockings full. So, uh, what? <laughs> you constantly stay on the naughty list, Joe. How dare you even think you're coming off the naughty list? I am the subhead of the naughty list. <laughs> All right, Remember, so Dave, there's good in everyone, Joe. There's good in everyone. I know. So, Dave, tell me about what's been going on. What have you been up to? Well, I've been out traveling. I'm uh, currently in Kentucky uh, doing some club visits. And um, wow. this past weekend, I was down in uh, the Pensacola area for the Southeastern meetings and uh, taught a club leadership 201 class. I've got another one coming up this weekend in Kentucky here. But, uh, and then it's off to uh, the, uh, U.S. Aquatic Sports Convention next week, where all of the politics and decisions and fun stuff is decided. Hey, Dave, with that being said, are we going to see any changes? You said politics and decisions. Any major decision you might be expecting to come down? Uh, there's a whole packet of legislation that is, uh, you know, on our website. Nothing that I would say is <laughs> earth shattering. So... Um, there's some minor elections that are coming up as well. Um, I know I'm hoping that our House of Delegates meeting gets over fairly early. Gosh, I know those things can go forever. Yes, they can. There can All be right, so, a lot so, of uh, wordsmithing in addition to a lot of uh, opinionating going on. So, All right, so Dave, go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead, Dave. Dave, real quick, since it being an Olympic year, it, will this be any kind of different meeting than if it was two years from now? Not really. It, okay. It's pretty much a set pattern. You know, elections are at certain times and uh, legislation happens when it has to happen based on what's going on. That's odd. I, by the way, Jeff is working to get back with us. He's, he's, he's been texting me and he's, he's wireless. So he will be back with us in a second. Dave, you've seen a lot of open water swimming. Right. And uh, we have a few people on there on the on the right on the on the uh, chat room over there, wondering about open water swimming. How do they sight? How do they relax their legs during a swim? Do you have any insight for them? Well, you know, I think Jeff was right on because uh, Jeff has been on some trips with us on open water, and you basically have to take that every third stroke and take a peek because, uh, contrary to popular belief, you can have a GPS not in a race but in practice, but. Uh, Buoys have been known to move. Uh, we we're doing a race in Hawaii once, and the far buoy had moved into the shipping lanes coming oh, wow. up, uh, wow. you know, the harbor there. And um, we had to scoot ahead to get that uh, buoy before it got run over by a tanker. And the swimmers are upset that, you know, we had moved the buoy. Well, we did it for their own safety, but they had to recite it because, it, you know, the currents were pulling it pretty strong. So, um, you know, the best way is every third stroke, take a peek and, and keep going. So I got a question for Dave down on the bottom right. Um, any idea where the May Pro Swim Series will be? Charlotte, question uh, mark? That will be decided by the senior committee at convention. Okay. When is convention? When is convention? Next week starts uh, Tuesday morning. <laughs> Next week, man, you are, you are on the go. You, this needs to be sponsored. You need to be sponsored by five hour energy by yourself. Five hours is only one fourth of my work day. No, you get a crate of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So talking about open water swimming, can it, can a, let's say a, not the best open water swimmer <laughs> win a 5k or a 10k meaning. All right. So can a, maybe a guy that's like fifth best or, or eighth best, win the event by absolutely because things happen i mean we've seen uh some of our best distance pool swimmers be killing it in the first half of a race and all of a sudden realize that uh they didn't do things right oh i'm going to swim this without taking hydration and crash we've seen them go off course um yeah, yeah so well, it's, it's a matter of Staying true to what your pacing is, know your abilities, and then if you're doing a great job of sighting and, and playing the conditions, 
you can win. I took an athlete that was in eighth place, and within the last kilometer, we were able to move ahead of everyone else because we played the current better than anybody else. So yeah, that's anything can happen. It's open. That's water. good. All right, I have another question down here from Big Ben Swimming. Will futures continue? Yes. They will continue? Yes, it was a huge success. Um, the sites will be selected next week, and then we'll know. Wow. The dates are August wow. 4th through the 7th next year. Wow, okay. All right, so by the way, you see a bunch of bubbles at the top of your screen. You can certainly follow those guys. That'll create, build the swim community in here. If they have our Mouse. Yes, if you can hover over them, it will follow, right? No, you have to click follow. But you'll click follow. You'll you'll figure it out. Anyway, Jeff Papel is back. Sorry about that, guys. I switched over to a laptop. <laughs> hey, that's the way to do it, and that's the way I'm doing it. But anyway, that's good. Good to have you back. All right, I'm going to take you right into this, and Dave, you can help out with this later. Jeff, yep. What? How do you define success? Oh, ooh, that's a tough one, there. I put Dave. I put Dave second on that one. Oh, uh, how do I define success? I mean, I, 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 you know, everybody probably has their own definition of success, and and you know, the way that they want to define it. Uh, for me, I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be specific to swimming, but it's just a matter of of obviously setting goals for yourself, uh, committing yourself to doing what's necessary and the steps uh, that are necessary in order to try to achieve that goal that you set set for yourself, and then going out and commit committing yourself to do the work uh, day in and day out to achieve it. Now, it's interesting. I, I have this, this conversation with our athletes all the time when we talk about goal setting and we talk about, say you fall sh uh, short of your goal, you know, were you still successful, you know, or were you a failure? How do you look upon it? And the way we look at it is, you know, it's all perspective. Go back to where you started. Even if you, if, if you look at success or goal setting, however you want to look at it, as a set of stairs and you're starting at the bottom, you know, you got your goal at the top. Say you end up going, you know, you, you, you climb the stairs and you get real close, but you didn't achieve the goal you set your, for yourself. If you look back, you're still a hell of a lot further than you were when you started, and it was success. Was it the ultimate goal? No, but you've improved. And, and that's kind of what I look at. From one season to the next, you know, we always have kids that set goals, you know, um, to be successful. And so many of them define their success of whether or not they reach that goal or not. Uh, and a lot of times, you know, our job as a coach is to kind of add perspective or put perspective perspective on it. Uh, just, you know, have them look back, see what they accomplished over the course of the season. And then when they really look, take a look back, they kind of see, oh, my God, I was successful. I didn't reach my goal, but I'm so much improved over, you know, where I was when I first started this process way back when. So, um, you know, whether it's swimming, whether it's school, you know, whether it's life, you name it. I think the biggest thing is if, if you can look in the mirror and say that you put your best effort into every every day's you know work uh, to try to make yourself better, a better person, a better swimmer, a better student, you name it. If you look in the mirror and say you did everything you could, you know, to get better, uh, I'm sorry. I, I think that's a success in anybody's book, definitely mine. Dave, Dave Thomas, you've done a million uh, uh, team meetings and stuff. How do you define it? Well, you have to set a, a set of standards that you want to meet. And then you have to be able to measure those standards. Mm -hmm. And as Jeff talked about goals, that is a set of standards. <laughs> and can you measure it? Because a lot of times people talk about success, they talk about excellence, but they don't ever set a standard for what that means. Yeah. So it's a moving target. And I don't think success is a moving target. It's what you set it as and what do you do along the way to meet those goals to get to that level of, of standard that you set for your level of success. And I think each one of us has to do that. And we, as coaches, we do that with our athletes. As coaches, hopefully we're doing it with ourselves. I know at our level, we're doing it, you know, in the sport. And um, so you can't, if you can't measure it, you're not sure if you're successful. Dave Van Buskirk, what about, what about Tori or what about you? How do you do it? So, so uh, real quick, I want to follow up on, the, on that question. What do you do, guys, when you have a swimmer that is starting to really – they're focusing on success, but now they're starting to overthink everything? Oh, yeah. How do you reel them back in and kind of redirect them? Well, I, I'll, I'll speak to that first, I guess. I, 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 I know I have examples. I've had examples over the years where I have an athlete that's getting better uh, and improving, um, but 
they feel they should still be faster, you know, or they should be at a higher level than they are. And, you know, a lot of what I tell them, especially as it relates to swimming, if it's specific to swimming, is that sex, that success and the standard they define themselves kind of by, um, it happens at a different time for everybody. You know, we, we, and you can't rush it. And a lot of times there's no rhyme or reason of when that happens. I mean, you know, I, again, it's a situation where for some kids, success is pretty instant. OK, and they're and, it, and it's easy for them. They're able to achieve it pretty quickly uh, with other individuals because there's so many different factors that go into success. You know, maybe that success and that overcoming that hurdle and, and reaching that that uh, I guess you could say culmination of a lot of hard work and sacrifice. Maybe it's later. Maybe it's a year or two years down the road. And it's one of those where when you have that talk with the athlete, you know, again, you, you try to show them, uh, you know, how much that their work and their commitment, what they put into this point has gotten them and how far it's gotten along the way. But then number two, again, it all comes back to perspective is you keep telling them, you're not quitting. You're not giving up. You got to keep working towards it. And you have to believe it really is a belief thing. You have to believe that at some point it's going to happen uh, for that individual. And uh, it's just real easy for kids to get down on themselves, uh, especially if they perceive uh, that they should be doing a lot better than they are. Uh, and again, as coaches, you know, again, it's our job because we want to keep them in the sport. We want to keep them swimming and we all of us want them to be successful. So it's our goal to obviously kind of keep them on track and keeping them motivated and obviously try to help keep them confident uh, and believe that it will happen to them at some point. All right, guys, want to want to welcome everybody back real quick before we continue on with that conversation. This is the Swimmer Joe Show with Dave Van Buskirk. We also have Coach Jeff Papel and Dave Thomas has been sitting in. Lucky to have him with us from USA Swimming. So welcome to the show. You guys can tell a little bird wherever that is over there, and then also you can ask a question over on the right. <laughs> if you're on your phone, it's down below. Also, yeah. you have. Uh, people up top that you can follow if you want to create a larger swim community for you guys. So anyway, um, any more with that question? Cause that was an awesome question right there. Well, one of the things that I always told my athletes was practice is for you to hone those skills so that when you get in a meet, you can get your head out of the way. <laughs> and that's where a lot of swimmers screw up. They, their head gets in the way of what their body has been trained to do. And, you know, Jeff is right. Once again, it's about believing in themselves believing that their training has done the job. And when they get to the race, they don't have to think about it. It comes naturally. That's why the little things make big differences every day in practice. Yep. That is a, that is a, uh, that's awesome. That's, that's what <laughs> Dave, any more on that? No, I think that's, that's great. We've got tons of swimmers right now. I think are having the same situation, especially Jeff going back into the, the, the weather's playing an issue and, and all the training so they're not saying, hey, the, I, I'm having issues because I'm not getting in the pool. I'm not getting faster. And and all of a sudden now they're really starting to overthink all this. Yeah, they do. It, it's easy for it to become a domino effect. And yep. then, and, and again, the, the swimmers just to kind of get uh, over overloaded, overstressed, obviously. And at that point, that's when those negative thoughts start to sink in. And, and you know, it's real important as a coach to be able to be – perceptive of that and, and to be able to kind of keep track of your athletes and if you see that coming in is maybe pull them aside and say hey let's talk for a little bit and you know and, and try to obviously feed them with some positive thoughts and, and, and get them uh, believing again you know you know what i see sometimes is is the mind i mean the the training you get tired 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 the mind problems go like this and then you know once you get broken down and tired yep. and you're not swimming as fast and work out the yep. mind is like Oh my gosh, what's going on here? And that's the that's when you got to sit them down and go, hey, look, we're training real, real hard. Get Absolutely. through this, do the best you can. Try to try to do the best. If you know that you're going 100 percent and work out and doing things right, it's going to be okay. Yeah. Well, I think now's the perfect time to throw the quote in. It's 90 percent mental, 50 percent physical. <laughs> and I'm Yogi Bear. Yogi. Perfect. I'm signing up, guys. I've got a couple calls I got to take. All right. Thanks a lot, it's, like it's like deja vu all over again. It is. <laughs> hey, it's time for the fat man to sing. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Dave. See you, Dave. All right, so we got we got a couple of people in the chat. We got uh, uh, Austin goes says teach them to practice practice mindful breathing. That's that's good. Absolutely. 
yeah, Austin, you may want to jump on and, and let us know what you mean by that. That would be good. Um, all right, so you had an interview with Ryan Rote. There he is right there. Speak of the devil. Uh, greeting from London. Oh, from London. wow. <laughs> wow, <laughs> fantastic. All right, so listen, Austin, it's, it's what is it? It's 12.40 a.m. or I something. I know. I just finished a blast with someone who had a problem with uh, breathing. So I'm just helping them with some mindful breathing. That's all. So what do you mean by that? Tell me what you mean by that. You see. Uh, and how does that help swimmers? You see, the, the, the key to it nowadays, everyone is nearly the same in, 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 in competition, even in the swimming, in running, the first, second, and third. If I see from my eye, I can't tell the difference. You have to go to a computer and check it, right? So the winning first, second, third, fourth, sometimes fifth, is no difference. It's no difference. And that's when the mind comes in now. Right. When the mind comes in now. Because a human being, no matter how fast or how pushed you go, the next person will be a little bit, just maybe a, a, a hair slower than you, that's all. That's, where, that's the between the gold and the silver. I'm sure you agree with that, right? If you see all the Olympics in the final, you see near the, the, the tw- uh, 25 meter dash or whatever, 50 meter dash. It's like everybody touches the, the thing at the same time. Only, yeah. the, only the computer can tell the difference. Right. Yeah, see? especially on the short races. It's really, yes, really short. Short. Yeah. So if you're talking about that comp- any, any style of competition, the mind has to be really calm. Absolutely. Because you're com- you're, you can train 20 hours. I also can train 21 hours. Yeah, right. Right. So, but the body and the mind, if they connect together, that's the big. That's the difference. Oh, that, absolutely. It's like I when agree. it's like when someone can do an amazing thing, and someone can without even pushing the weight, using the physical strength and the mind, can lift up an elephant or some woman who jump in and suddenly lift up a car. How could she do it? It's the mind that is the extra edge nowadays. In the 21st yeah. century, if you want to be the best of the best and even the best of the super best, you need to learn mindful breathing because you need to calm your mind down and be at that moment. And that moment is only very short, 10 seconds, 9.99 yeah. whatever second it is. It's very well, short. Thank you. Yeah, Austin, thank you very much for You're joining welcome. us. We do have a, a few people that want to join us as well. Um, okay. That is so true, and uh, we appreciate you joining us. Thank, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you Take care. Have a good one. All right. Jamie Marks. So, Jamie, what, I see Jamie Marks on there. Jamie, uh, when, yeah, one of your swimmers, Jamie is there. She's talking to all the people on the side, and there she is right there. Let's see what she's got to say. And tell everybody a tweet. Guys, by the way, while we're waiting for Jamie here, you <laughs> now that you called me out, I have to. <laughs> you have to. Hey, Jeb. Hey, Jamie. How are you? Good. How are you? Doing well. We miss you. I know. I miss you guys. I think I'll be coming back in a couple weeks for your um, duel. Awesome. Good I forget what day it is, though. I think it's a Thursday. <laughs> Well, that's great. So Jamie, she's she's going to school, getting her master's. Let let everybody know, Jamie, what you're doing. I'm getting my master's in communications, um, and working with Jill. <laughs> she does. She does. She. You know what, Jeff? And, and I don't know. She's probably done interviews before, but she interviewed uh, Mark Sharanik, um and a few other swimmers from UF this weekend. It was her, and we're gonna save those bloopers for later because they're great. They're awesome. <laughs> Hey Jamie, Dale enjoyed seeing you this weekend. Oh, I know. I it was great to see him. That's what he said. He goes, she came up to me. She said, "Do you remember me?" He's like, "Of course, I remember you." Well, he looked at me like I was crazy because I came right up to him. He's doing great there. You have though. Yeah, yeah, because he loves it. All right, so Jamie, Jamie, this is a. It's not. I I just thought of this just now, but this is a a roast kind of 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 Jeff. So oh, not really. It's not. It's not a roast, really. But I'm just <laughs> Jamie. Jamie's known Jeff for a long time. Swam at Arkansas. Uh, was at Bulls before that. Coached with him for three years. 
So tell me a, 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 your best moment with Jeff or the, a fun moment with Jeff. And also there's people on the side here that they can also chime in in the chat. <laughs> um, hmm. I have so many moments. I mean, a big one that sticks in my mind is my last swim at NCs. Um, you know, it wasn't my best swim. I uh, actually did pretty poorly, but I got out of the water and I can't remember exactly what you said, Jeff, but I mean, it obviously tons of tears. And, <laughs> and I, I think you just said, you know, you had a great career and you know, that's what matters. It's not the last swim that matters. It was the whole thing. Absolutely. Wow. That's, that's touching right there. That's good wow. stuff. That's <laughs> I need to like around here somewhere. I got to find them. I need to like, I need to like sign off. <laughs> All right. So anyway, welcome, welcome guys to uh, the Swimmer Joe show with Dave Van Buskirk and Jeff Papel. And now Jamie Marks is on with us. All right. So listen, real quick, we got about 14 minutes left. Um, I want to talk to uh, Jeff about um, building the program there. They, we, we talked about that a little bit. What do you see in the future? What's coming up? Uh, things like that. I know that, um, gosh, it's not going to be long where you're, you're just destroying everybody in the state. So. I <laughs> no, I appreciate that. I mean, it's, it's, it's been fun, but we're still not where we want to be. So, uh, you know, coming up in, in the near future, obviously we're in the middle of the high school season. So, um, we have the high school state championships the first week of November. Uh, our hope is obviously to, to be able to repeat on the girls' side. Our boys finished fifth last year in 2A. And, uh, you know, some of the teams that were ahead of us actually moved to different classifications. Um, at the same time, American Heritage, who's won probably six, seven years in a row, they're still there. Uh, they're definitely the team to beat. But our, our guys' team uh, is shooting for them, that's for sure. I don't know if it's possible or not, but we feel like we can compete. So, um you know, we're, we're kind of looking at that meet, um, you know, some pretty big goals, uh, both on the girls' side as well as the, bo the boys' side. And, uh, and everybody's pretty excited about it. Um, you know, on the club end, you know, we've got junior nationals and nationals in December. Uh, we're going to send most of our team to um, Gainesville, uh, the holiday classic there. That's always a fun meet. We've been there the last three years. Uh, it exposes our kids to, you know, different competition. They get out of, out of South Florida and have an opportunity to see some great swimmers from uh, Florida Swimming LSC. Uh, and they also get to swim at the University of Florida on that college campus, which for a lot of them is pretty motivating and inspiring. Um, but then, like I said, we've got a handful of athletes that have also qualified for junior nationals uh, in Atlanta, uh, as well as uh, U.S. nationals out in Seattle. So uh, that's kind of what we're getting ready for. We've got the four kids that qualify for U.S. Olympic trials for next uh, June. We've got a couple others that are trying uh, over the course of this year. And that's what makes this year so much different. It's an Olympic year. So obviously we're going to be doing more long course training over the course of the, of the season. And, uh, you know, it's interesting, you know, I was talking briefly about the high school season, but you know, when I was at bowls many years ago, it, we always felt like the high school season was really a byproduct of the way that we really focus year round. We never really focused on high school swimming. We were saying focus was always on the big meets, you know, the U S nationals, the Olympic trials that were all long course competitions. Um, back then they used to do us open in December. So we always knew that was coming up right after, you know, the high school state meet. So it's like, even in our training, even though, you know, the high school order events, there's nothing over a hundred a stroke, there's nothing over 500 free, you know, we've got kids that swim the four IM and distance free and 200 stroke. We're still training the same way. We're not training any differently because it's the high school season. We're training as if it was sure. just a normal season. So, um, you know, that's kind of how we're going about things right now. And, you know, each season we're just trying to, to get better and, and do a better job than we did the previous season. And, and that's one of the ways that we've just been able to kind of keep taking steps. You know what it looks like? And, and also a lot of coaches, I, I used to coach, so I, I kind of know with the going through the summer when you're training real hard, you're going, you know what? This fall is going to be pretty good because yeah. we had an awesome summer. And now Absolutely. we just need to come off, refine a few things, rest a little bit, and we're going to haul. Um, all right. So listen, Dave always does this with oh, our man. You ready? show on deck. Dave Van Buskirk, he does his five questions, four or five questions, and 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 they're pretty funny and cool. So Dave, you ready? Thank you for putting me on the spot. Thanks, Joe. All right, here we go. Jeff, if they had to make a movie about your life, who would you hope would play you? Oh, my God. 
Besides me, besides me, besides me. Besides you, that'd be, you'd definitely be in the mix, that's for sure. Um, oh, man. Now, this is not a horror flick. It is just a regular. Oh, that's not funny. <laughs> all right, I don't know why this, this person comes to mind at all, but uh, Robert Downey Jr. Oh, nice. Wow. He's a, Iron he's Man. A good actor. He's yeah. a good actor. <laughs> He's a good actor. That's not why. <laughs> you, let's, let's just move to closest big meet for you. Coming up next is going to be States. So let's say you're walking on deck at States. What would be your theme music as you walk on deck? Oh, wow. Nice. Well, it's kind of interesting. I've never laughed. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh! Oh, I remember I told you what he likes, the music you <laughs> Oh, wait, so wait a minute. Why are we waiting for him to come back on? <clears throat> we got, there's so much text going on on the right. You guys should let us know. Well, some people are sharing. Robert Robson. Redford. Robert Redford. J-Rod was talking about his shoes and 3,000 set. We're going to get to that, J-Rod. And then. Um, Jonathan. Hey, yes, Joe, when we guys. get back, when Jeff hops back on, let's go. I think you're down to about nine minutes. Let's go ahead and get some other questions real quick. Okay, so go ahead, Dave. So uh, go ahead. What was your song? I don't know. Last year it was Eminem. <laughs> it was it was some rap song uh, that we were all all into. I don't know, oh, man. Song, shoot. Oh man, you're putting me on the spot because I don't really. I, I like all kinds of different music. Um, let me look. I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna look at my iPod real quick because I put all my good music on there. Um, I am gonna say. He, he wants rap. Jamie, you told me what he wanted. <laughs> you know. You like hip-hop. I do like hip-hop. I mean, I listen to that stuff. I don't know. I'll just find some song that kind of gets me going. And usually the, the music I like is the same darn music the kids like for some reason. So yeah. I'm sure I'll find a song that all of us like. But I'm, I'm kind of at a loss right now, unfortunately. Hey, well, coaching coaching definitely keeps you young. All but right, anyway, well, go ahead. All right, real quick, real quick. We'll kind of wrap this up because I know we got some other questions. Um and you look at the, the rule book and oh heavens, I didn't bring my rule book with me. Thank heavens, Joe. Yeah. What five, rule six. in high school swimming would you change if it was Jeff's swim organization? <laughs> and we've had some great ones. We've had some two rules. One's the jewelry rule that was just overturned by North uh, National Federation, but Florida didn't overturn it. So we're still <laughs> we're we're still following that one. Um, and then the other rule, which is probably a little obscure, but is the, the scoring. <laughs> I'm so okay. used to college scoring and where if you win an event, you automatically outscore the other opponent. That's not the case in high school swimming at all. And uh, we kind of found that out last week. And, uh, and again, when you're doing the scoring, it, it's just, it doesn't favor winning an event. It definitely favors depth. And uh, which, you know, I can understand the importance of that too, but I'd probably be in favor of changing it. Hey, real quick, I want to throw this out, Joe, is we've heard one about co-ed relays. Whoa. Yeah. Red relays would be pretty cool. Uh, yep. Like I, I know the you know the U.S. athletes that got an opportunity this month. Uh -oh. uh, really enjoyed it. I think that'd be pretty neat. That's good. What else you got, Dave? All right, go ahead, Joe. I, you want to get some of the questions on the right hand side? All right. So questions on the side. We got uh, hundred IM. Bobby said, "What about?" Yeah, I agree. W I agree. Hundred IM would be cool. That, that would, would be, be good. Cool. Nick Iroquiti says, uh, Taylor Swift for your song. No. <laughs> Probably not. That wouldn't get me very excited. <laughs> and then J-Rod told me to ask you about your shoes. I'm wondering which shoes he's referring to. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. He just said, ask him about his shoes. And then also a lot of people, there's two or three people on the, on the writer saying, hey, my favorite moment was the first 3,000 for time that I ever did with Jeff. Yeah, we, well, there's a lot of things that we've done here in the last three years at Gulliver, which is like a first for all of them, you know, and, and that was probably one of the things that, you know, what we've done. We do a three down for time at the beginning of the season. It's really just kind of gauge conditioning. But for a lot of them that never done it before, that was kind of an eye opener <laughs> for sure. That's awesome. All right. What else we got for what else we got for Mr. Jeff? We, we certainly appreciate you joining us today for this first annual first weekly show. Um, and Jamie, My thanks pleasure. for joining us as well. I, real quick, this is really cool. I'm glad you 
glad you guys have gone to this format. It's neat. Real quick, Jeff. by the way, everybody, everybody here, everybody here, we will be here every Wednesday at seven o'clock. So please join us. Tweet it out. Have fun right. with us. It's just a laid back, fun atmosphere. And everybody needs to follow everybody else. And yeah, follow everybody to make a larger and larger community. Dave, what were you going to say? Hey, hey, real quick, Jeff. Any shockers that we might should suspect uh, coming up this um, uh, championship season, districts, regionals, states, any shock? Not so much in my classification, but I think you better watch out for Lake Highland Prep girls in the 1A. Okay. I think we, they're, they're a team to keep an eye on, and uh, they've got a lot of strong swimmers. And once you get to the state meet, depth isn't as much as, uh, as an issue there. It comes, it's more about the quality and the uh, points that you can score up in that top eight, and uh, as well as relays, and, and, and they've got some strong swimmers there. Yeah, you know, we we talked about that early on. I think when you were offered a second was um, I went over and talked to Mike Curley uh, the other day and, and see Paige Hamilton. She already went a 54-7 in the 100 fly and 23-2 and 51-2, you know, in the, in the 100 free. And I'm like, are you kidding me? This is like the yeah. third week. And, and she's already going that fast. Yeah. You know, he's got three girls that go 55-5 or faster in the 100 fly. Three girls. Yep. That's crazy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anyway. All right. I want to thank everybody. I want to thank everybody that joined us. I want to thank the aquatic shop brought to you by the aquatic shop. And we will see you. And thanks Dave Van Buskirk, Jamie and coach Jeff Papel. And thank we will you. see you next Wednesday at seven o'clock. Join us again. Thanks guys. Thank you all. See ya. See you guys. Bye. -bye. Go off the record to the